Alright, finding out who killed Sakura. It's not a matter of hoping we can do it. If we want to survive, we have to do it. It's kind of hopeless, Hope. We have no choice but to just do it! Okay, let the investigation begin. Alright, I better check the Monokuma file before anything else. The victim was Sakura Ogami. The time of death was estimated around 12 noon. The body was discovered in the rec room on the third floor of the school. There is evidence of a strong blow in the victim's head. No other injuries were noted. However, it seems that at some point the victim suffered from violent vomiting of blood. So... It's probably poison then, if it's vomiting of blood. That's the only way- I feel like that's the only- because a blow to the head, there's no way, like, that's gonna, like... I feel like she would just shrug that off, but with poison? Definitely. Okay. Hey. I think the case this time might be a challenge. Why's that? So... The only way into the rec room is the door we just came through. And that door had been jammed shut with a chair from inside the rec- Oh my god, if it's suicide, that'll just be make- that'll make things more complicated, if anything. Uh. And that door had been jammed shut with a chair from the inside of the rec room, which means the killer would have had to escape somehow after bearing the door. So if the door was blocked by the in from the inside, then there's no way in or out until we broke the window. There's like, it's your escape, right? In other words... This is a classic locked room murder. L locked room murder? I guess you might see this kind of thing a lot in mystery m movies or books or whatever. But could it really be easy and could it really happen in real life? And right before our very own eyes like this? Are you curious about more about what a locked room murder entails? That's fine. When you break down this this kind of murder mystery, there are four basic types. The first type is when the locked door is created after the actual crime is committed. This simply means that the killer commits his crime, then through some special method seals the room. This mainly involves some sort of trick involving the locking of the room. Basic approaches include some using a string or simple mechanism. Uh, mechanism. These are a number of variations. So for that, all we have to do is check the door to see what's there, right? Second type, the locked room already exists before the crime is committed. Oh? In other words... Basically, the killer uses a special contraption or tool from outside the target. So whoever this fucking killer is, he's a very crafty bastard. <coughs> uh, I don't know, I feel like he's like the only smart one to be able to think of this contraption of sorts. Basically, the killer uses a special contraption or tool from outside the target, the victim inside. You push a switch, and it fires a handgun. You shoot an arrow through a gap of the door, something like that. However... But in this case, it doesn't seem to fit. There are no guns or arrows in the school, and the door doesn't have any gaps that would allow it. Yeah, I think we probably crossed that one out of the list. It's true. The third type is when the killer stays in the room until it's open. What do you mean by that? In other words... They stay hidden, and when the door is open, they use the confusion to blend in with the group. They pretend they showed up along with everyone else, and that's that. That sounds like it could be possible, maybe, but we didn't really see anyone, did we? It's true. And the fourth and final type is when it wasn't actually a locked room at all. Not a locked In room? Other words. By that, I mean there actually is an alternate escape route somewhere within the room. You see this a lot in novels and things, but in reality, it's generally not possible. Then you think we can cross that one off, too? Indeed. I believe so, yes. So when it comes to locked rooms and the basic, those are the basics. Which one of the four choices seems to be most likely in this case? That's a good question. Answering that should be primary focus during this trial. But right now, I can't really say. Alright. So we were able to find figure out the way the killer set up the uh, murder, at least. Or again, it could be suicide. <laughs> Who the fuck knows? Until I figure that out, the truth behind Sakura's death will be stay hidden. It's definitely a tough mystery. I need to concentrate and investigate as much as I can. Okay, first off, let's look at the door. Hinges or whatever. The door is the only way in or out of the rec room. The door doesn't have a lock and there's no evidence that that the mountings have been tampered with. The only notable challenge to the door is the smashed window. Which happens, of course, when I broke it when to get inside. 
There's no evidence that any kind of string or mechanism was used on the door. In other words, I don't see anything suspicious about the door itself. Alright, so we'll cross that out of the way. Uh, what the hell is this thing falling out for? This looks like some kind of wrapper. <gasps> That's... Do you recognize it, Hina? No. Well, yeah, I mean, I gave it to her. That's a candy wrapper. Sarka got super upset when she found out Genocide Jack had attacked me, right? So, after we left the nurse's office, I gave it to her. I thought it might help her calm down a little. So you gave the candy to Sakura? I found a big box of it in the warehouse. I really like them. Actually, as soon as we got into the warehouse, I took the entire box back to my room. I made sure nobody else could get their hands on him. You really like them that much. They really like them that much. But I wanted Sakura to get a chance to try one for herself. That's why I gave it to her. But now, that's... They've lost all their flavor. Okay, polka dot candy wrapper has been added to the truth handbook. Not sure how that pertains to the mystery at hand, but I'm pretty sure that we'll find a way. Anything on this? Nothing, okay. We could gather witnesses' testimony. We could gather the seat and the uh, broken trash can, maybe. Or the broken door. There's some kind of plastic container rolling around near the entrance of the... Ooh, excuse me, of the room. So... It looks like a protein drink, and it's empty. So I must have drank it. Everyone knows how much she loved her protein. I'm assuming that the protein drink was poisoned then, I'm assuming. And she mentioned more than once how protein was good for all sorts of ailments. Yeah. I wouldn't take that too hard if I were you. I know. But still, this protein can. It's got the label on it that says, Kema A-2. That reminds me, Sakura mentioned how the chem lab had all kinds of health stuff. So she must have gotten this from the chem lab. Just a second. That's strange. How was it? Hey. You see what's scattered around the can? Shards of light blue glass. That must have been parts of the window I broke to get inside. But the thing is, it's underneath the chem. Right? And I don't think that's barred its way or something. Wait, no, no, it was a chair that blocked the way, not the cam. What am I thinking? So... The fuck? Why is the glass underneath the chemical bottle? Correct. But they aren't scattered around the can. They're also underneath it. Why does that matter? It, it is implied that the glass is somehow broken beforehand. Before we bash through the thing. So... I can't say for sure, but you're probably going to want to take a note of it. I feel like it'll become an important clue later on. Okay. I can kind of see it. It is very off-putting how there's glass underneath the chemical protein drink. So yeah, I could definitely see that. There's a chair there. The chair was shoved against the doorknob so we couldn't get the door open. There's no evidence that any kind of string or mechanism was used on the chair. In other words, there's no reason to think that the chair had anything special done to it. So most likely it's either the third or the fourth option then, if that's the case then, right? What was the second option again? Examine both the door and the chair. There's no doubt that the reason the door didn't open was simply because the chair was shoved up against it. I kept the doorknob from turning and the door from opening. And there was no evidence of the door or chair being tampered with or anything like that. So the killer must have created the locked door from the inside, not the outside. Well, first off, where exactly did the, um... Does it open inward or outward? Does it is it like a push or a pull? I can't, that I really need to know. All right, the rec room door has been added to the. Actually, no, it has to be a push from the outside because if it's a pull, then we could easily just pull it and then, yeah. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wait, no, it is possible to like barricade the fucking chair. So once they dealt with the murder, they um tried to barricade it, opened the door, and with a little bit of manufacturing handiness, or handiwork, they could have easily just locked the door there, and um, I guess tested it to see if the door was absolutely locked. So yeah, it's possible. Never mind. What was I thinking? Okay. There's a mirror? Where's that clock? It's around 1 o'clock right now. So the murder took place one hour before. According to Mokuma file, Sakura died around 12 at noon. So roughly an hour ago. Was that when Kyoko and I were moving Alter Ego? Alright, that doesn't sound good. Do, do, do. 
does this have anything to do with anything? There are four red bottles lined up in the shelf. Okay. And inside each bottle, there was some kind of Monokuma figure. What I'm wondering is, how did they get those figures inside the bottles? It looks like there's like two of them that could fit in, but I'm not seeing any red glass. Wait, no, no, I did see red glass. Never mind. Okay. So... It's no different from your standard ship in a bottle. You know where the bottle's opening is smaller than the boat placed inside? You never seen that, that? In other words... So, it's the Monokuma version of that Monokuma bottle, if you will. Alright, more evidence, why not? And there's these broken red shards, which I'm assuming are one of the bottles, at least. There are shards of glass scattered all around the chair of Sakura was sitting on. Glass is all red, and these are the top and bottom sections of the bottle, right? So this must have originally been a bottle. <laughs> you could say it's from the Monokuma bottle, although I'm not sure where exactly the Monokuma figure is. Whether or not that's shattered or not is. There's something else on the ground near the glass. Oh, there it is, never mind. It's a figure, and it fits in the palm of my hand. It's a Monokuma figure. Alright. That's that. This could be used for blood trauma onto the head. I feel like I'm finally starting to make sense of things little by little. The Monokuma bottle sitting on the top shelf. The Monokuma figure we found on the ground. The red shards of glass, which probably started out as a bottle. Which would mean Sakura must have been hit in the head with the Monokuma bottle, right? The shards of glass and the Monokuma figure are evidence of that. So I think it's safe to say that the Monokuma bottle was the weapon. Okay, sure, but again, coughing up blood, that could also be- So there's like two different ways of murder, basically. Uh, let's look at the cough of blood right there, unless I could search- I could search up the comic book thing. The locker! There's a lot of white stuff in struggle, it seems like. Huh? The locker is open. And there's... And there on the inside... It's a handprint. Uh, if only we had some sort of, like, forensic scientist that could figure out whose handprints these are. It's a handprint. Why? What's a handprint doing here? It looks like... S it looks like someone touched the inside of the locker and left a handprint in all the dust. It's true. It looks quite fresh, too. I'd say someone was hiding in the locker and left behind a little extra something. Maybe the killer hid in here until the locker room was open, don't you think? And during all the confusion, they popped out and joined the rest of the group. Wrong. Unfortunately, that's not a possibility. Huh? Why not? Hey. Think back, before we opened the door, we looked up the room inside, right? Oh yeah, and the locker was already open in that at that point. I didn't pay attention to that, but alright. So there's no way someone could have hidden in there until after we opened the door. Alright, so... That possibility is out of the question. What does the handprint mean? We could probably figure out whose handprints those are by measuring up their hands or something? Huh, who knows. Alright, what about this cup of blood here? There's a blood stain on front of the magazine shelf. It must have come from Sakura, right? But that doesn't make any sense. Why is it so far from where she died? This could be the cough blood. Who knows? Oh, what else is there? Okay. Just her body and the magazine stand. That same shelf full of magazines. There are all different kinds of magazines here. Alright, that totally helped. Am I missing anything other? Aside from witnesses' testimony, maybe? That's probably it. There are two are somewhere out there. Who knows? Alright, and to examine the dead body. Sakura drew her last breath sitting slumped forward on the chair. There's, ob there's obvious evidence of the blow to the head so Sakura suffered. Normally, I wouldn't have any problem believing that. That's where what killed her. But according to the Monokuma file, she also vomited blood. And I can see the trace of blood on her lips for sure. So, what would have caused her to vomit blood? The Monokuma file specifically said she hadn't suffered any other injuries. Sta status of Sakura's body has been added to the proof bullets. Maybe getting hit in the head somehow caused her to start vomiting blood? <laughs> Not a chance. But Byakuya... That's fine. However, your eyes have landed on the most interesting location. Interesting? Naturally. Yes, most interesting. Don't you agree? No. I don't think I'd call it interesting. But it does make me wonder. The reason Sakura vomited blood absolutely has to be connected to why she died. 
right? You seem to be smart at this contraption. What do you have to say then, sir? What? What do you want? You're bothering me. Go away. He's not even trying to hide how much he despises me. Well, so much for that. Um... Are we? Do you have any uh, witnesses testimony or something? We already know who did it! <laughs> Byakuya, Toko, or Hiro? It had to be one of them! They couldn't stand the sight of her! You agree with me, don't you, Makoto? Um, well, I don't want to say anything for sure without finding out more. Then let me help you find more. You see, Sakura asked all three of them to meet with her. You know where? Right here in the rec room. What? After I went to the nurse's office this morning, Sakura and I both left together, right? Well, eventually, she went off on her own. But when I saw her again after that, she told me she said she'd left a note for each of them. She asked them to meet her in the rec room by noon. By noon. The Monokuma file says she died right around then. I'm telling you the truth, I heard it right from Sakura herself. And she and I tried to stop her. But she wouldn't listen. She said not to worry that she would just she just wanted to talk to them. And this is what happened. If I stopped her, by force even, this would never have happened. Okay. Alright, so we have Aoi's account now. Well, the fact that she had asked those three to meet her, and she asked them to come to the rec room at noon, the same time and place she ended up dying. It might be good to confirm what I just heard with the three of them directly. Okay then. And lastly, Kyoko, what do you have to say? However, but for Sakura to have been killed, she's not the type who would go down without a fight. It's true. He certainly did, I would say. She was the ultimate martial art artist, strong in body and mind and spirit. So how was the killer able to get the upper hand on her? I wonder, did someone get the upper hand? They must have taken her by surprise, right? Certainly. Certainly. They wouldn't have needed to if they expected to stand ch any chance against her. Alright, Byakuya, you're hiding something. Tell me. What? There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Hmm. Make it quick. Is it true that Sakura asked you to meet her in the rec room? <laughs> so you found out. Interesting. Then it's true. I did receive a note on to that effect, yes. But what fool would do what it said and risk being killed by that monster? So you didn't go see her? <laughs> of course not. I ripped the note and shred and threw it away. I haven't seen Sakura today at all. Okay. That could be his account maybe, but should I accept that as truth or Come not? On. If you're finished, please remove yourself from my sight. Okay. So if he is true, maybe he has also has an alibi as well. <coughs> Makoto, have you finished your general investigation? Yeah, I think so, for the most part. So then. then you should probably go talk to people now. I'm on guard duty, so I can't leave. Listen to me. Which is why I've decided you'll go in my place. Hmm. Really? Okay, then. So... Next up on the line, we'll be investigating and uh, prosecuting the other two for their information. So stay tuned for the next episode of Danganronpa.